Some of you going tomorrow night? Good. So welcome, and we extend a warm welcome to all our friends who are watching from home. So today is a special day in our church year, and I know some of you know it because we talked about it in Sunday school. What is today? Who can tell me? Go ahead, Lily. Do you remember? You said it. Reformation Sunday. That's right. Very good. You might think if you look around you, it's like wear a red Sunday, right? Well, because it is. Because the color for Reformation is red. So, what do we celebrate on Reformation Sunday? Anyone know what we're remembering? What do you think? We are remembering God. We are, absolutely. Well, we're going to look at the word Reformation. If we break that word apart, we get re formation or if we take off part of this word we get reform now miss emily is going to help demonstrate what it means to reform she's going to give us an example so let's look at this piece of play-doh what is that a circle now miss emily is going to do a little work in just a few seconds she's going to reform it into something else and let's see if you can figure out a heart. That's right. Now, it's, a still sa- it's still the same piece of Play-Doh, right? Still the same color, but it's reformed into a heart, okay? Well, there's a man named Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King Jr., but Martin Luther that looked something like this. I found this in the office. This is the day to use it, right? Okay? It's a bobblehead. All right. So we're going to watch a video, and we're going to learn about how this man helped to reform the church. So let's watch. This is the story of Martin Luther. He got up to some pretty adventurous things. He was kidnapped by knights on horseback, lived in disguise in a castle, and helped some nuns escape from a convent by hiding them in barrels. But as a young man, he was troubled by a deep sense that he wasn't right with God. Once, in a thunderstorm, a lightning bolt nearly struck him. He thought he was going to die, and he cried out for help to one of the saints, saying rashly, Save me, and I'll become a monk. He survived, and so, true to his word, he gave up his studies as a lawyer and became a monk. His friends and family said he was wasting his talent. In the monastery, he started reading the Bible. He discovered that it was God's mercy and love that was all that was needed to be right with God. And for the first time in his life, he found a deep peace with God. Luther was invited to be a lecturer at the University of Wittenberg. He taught through books of the Bible, and his lectures were popular. Even ordinary people from the town came along. In those days, the Catholic Church was telling Christians that their good behavior could earn them heaven. But Luther knew from the Bible that no amount of good works could earn you forgiveness. Not even the Pope was able to give forgiveness from God. Only God could do that. Luther saw that the church had left behind what the Bible taught and was even making things up for its own gain. He decided he must teach against these false ideas. He made his complaints public by nailing them to the place in town where people published important documents the door of the castle church. He explained that it wasn't possible to buy God's forgiveness or to live a life that was good enough to deserve to know God. His writings showed that God wants to forgive the wrong we've done and that this is only possible because Jesus, the Son of God, came to pay the punishment that our wrong deserved. Jesus did this as he died in our place. Luther's ideas quickly spread throughout Europe thanks to a recent invention, the printing press. The Pope wrote a document saying that Luther had to take it all back, and if he didn't, he'd be treated as a heretic. Luther refused, and publicly burned a copy of the Pope's letter. Luther's ideas shook things up religiously, politically, and culturally. He was soon summoned to stand before the Emperor and answer for his supposed crimes of explaining what the Bible said. The Emperor declared Luther an outlaw, banning his literature. And that's when he was rescued and went to live in disguise in a castle. 
dressing in knight's clothing, he changed his name to Sir George and grew his hair and a beard and spent his time translating the New Testament. Again, it was published widely, meaning ordinary people could read the Bible for the first time. Luther then secretly returned to Wittenberg. He continued to write books and translate the Bible. He also got married and had a family. Europe was buzzing with Luther's message about the Bible. Today, 500 years on, the truths of the Bible that Luther knew continue to impact millions of people. People who've come to know God personally, knowing the peace and forgiveness Jesus offers us. The forgiveness that Luther found is still available today. We can all be in a right relationship with God because of one man, the Lord Jesus Christ. So reforming is something that's still going on in the church today. We're still learning how to be God's people, growing in our faith. So today, to help you remember this day, I'm going to give you each some model magic to take home, and you can make a circle out of it, and then reform the circle into the heart. And then if you let it set overnight, you'll have a remembrance of how much God loves you and a remembrance from Reformation Sunday. So there you go. Now, would you all please bow your heads and we'll close. Would you be my echo, please? We'll close with an echo prayer. So would you please be my echo? Dear God, thank you for helping us learn and grow. When we need to change, Help us to reform. Help us to always share your love with others. And together we say, Amen.